All right, today we are talking about intermittent fasting. So during your meal, you eat carbohydrates and carbohydrates or carbs are broken down into glucose. Now the glucose gets absorbed through the intestinal wall and it enters into your bloodstream. The arteries then transport the glucose to your organs throughout your body. In order for your organs and your cells to be able to use that glucose, the pancreas secretes insulin. And insulin is the aid that helps the organs and the cells absorb that glucose to use for energy. So glucose is then used as the main energy source for those cells. Excess glucose that is not used by the organs is then stored in your body. It is stored in the liver, and that's stored as glycogen, and then in fatty adipose tissue as fat cells. And so in between your meals, when you're not eating, the liver gradually converts that glycogen back to glucose to continue to supply energy to your body. Now the liver can store up to 10 hours worth of glycogen for your body to use for energy, just stored up in your liver. Although if you exercise, that time frame is much shorter because when you're exercising, your body is burning more glucose at a much faster rate. And then actually, if you choose strength training exercises where your body breaks down tissue during your training, you will find that your body continues to use up that glucose to repair tissue hours after you were at the gym, which is why strength training is so good for you. But that's for another video. So once the liver's glycogen storage is used up, the body begins to convert adipose tissue, which is your fat cells, into fatty acids that act as fuel for the liver. So that process, converting fatty acids back to glycogen in the liver, is known as ketosis. And I'm sure you've heard of the keto diet, and that is where it comes from. Your body's process of converting fat into energy instead of using sugar energy. So this is when our body begins to burn fat or burn its own body fat for energy. Now I'm sure the simplified explanation of intermittent fasting sounds great. Are you ready to hop on the bandwagon already? Not so fast. Intermittent fasting is not for everyone. Here are some people who should not consider fasting. Women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, it is not appropriate. Children and adolescents who are still growing. People with eating disorders or a history of disordered eating people who are underweight, people with specific medical conditions like type 1 diabetes. And as always, it's so important to consult with your doctor before you make any significant changes to your diet, especially if you have a medical condition. Um, it's also not for people who want to gain muscle mass um, because you're essentially training your body to burn its own tissue. And so usually we do not recommend the keto diet if someone is trying to gain mass. Now, there are different types of ways to intermittent fast. The most common is the 16-8, where you eat for the eight hour window and then you fast for the 16 hours. It's basically just extending your sleeping fast. So you can choose a window that fits your lifestyle. You can choose to wake up and not eat until 11 a.m. or maybe 10 a.m. if you get up really early. Um, but it's basically like skipping breakfast. That's kind of the most common form of this fasting routine. Um, and if that feels too drastic, like your body maybe can't handle that immediately, you can definitely start out with smaller fasting windows um, that feels more comfortable to your body. So some people start with 12 on, 12 off, and then they gradually increase the fasting window every few days until they reach the desired ratio. Now, during your fasting time, you are allowed and very much encouraged to drink water. It's so important to be staying uh, hydrated during your fasting window. Um, you can also drink black coffee and unsweetened tea. Uh, given that these things contain no sugar, your body is not receiving any additional calories and it can't use that for extra energy and therefore it's, you know, still forced to use the stored energy sources. Now remember, the body can store up to 12 hours worth of sugar energy in the liver. So in order for your body to start burning your stored fat from adipose tissue, your fast should be longer than 12 hours. That's why usually de the desired window is about 16 hours. During the eight hour eating window, balanced meals are best. Some medical professionals highly encourage the keto diet, which is an extremely low carbohydrate diet 
And while this can work for some, it's not necessary to experience the benefits of intermittent fasting. Um, given that you're also putting restrictions on your body with the fasting windows, I don't typically recommend also restricting your food groups that drastically as well. So you're already putting restrictions on your body with shorter eating window, um, especially more than you're used to. So adding additional levels of restriction can often work against your goals and send your body into feeling extremely deprived and having really intense cravings for the things that you're not allowing your body to consume that it has consumed for many, many years. So back to what you can be eating during your win eating window. The recommendation is to eat two full meals. I find it best to give yourself a balanced meal of whole grains, two to three servings of vegetables, and a clean and lean protein source. This could look different for everyone, but for example, you could eat a large kale and quinoa salad with grilled chicken. Uh, you could do a beef and vegetable stir fry with brown rice, or even a sweet potato with ground turkey and broccoli. Uh, I actually used to own and operate a meal prep and delivery business, and this was the formula that we used to build all of our meals for our customers. So roughly five to 600 calories per meal, loaded with protein and fiber that will help you stay satiated and prevent the dreaded starvation feelings that we all hate when we're starting a diet. Other things to keep in mind are your total amount of calories that you're consuming. Uh, it is best to consult with a dietitian or a nutrition coach to determine specifically how many calories you should be consuming in a day to meet your goals but just sticking to a 16-8 intermittent fasting and eating window alone is not directly going to cause weight loss. You still must be consuming less calories in your day than you're burning in order to see weight loss results. This also stands true for people who just wish to maintain a healthy weight. So with all of this information, what is the best part of intermittent fasting? Well, first of all, it's free. Uh, it can be flexible with your lifestyle, and it's relatively simple compared to other diets or even some crazy supplement plans. It can be very effective in a way to meet your health goals long term, especially if we're looking at lifestyle changes. It's not so drastic that it prevents you from living your life in a regular way, like you would still be able to enjoy things like going out to eat with family or going to a friend's house for dinner. Um, you can still make it work with the lifestyle that you live. So I hope you found this information helpful. And if there's something else you want to hear about, let me know. Uh, you can comment below and let me know a topic that you might want to hear next. Until then, be well, and I'll see you next time.